So here's Audacity. I just have this opened. Um, I'm going to set my microphone is for my MacBook Pro. So I'm using my built in microphone right now for my computer. I do have, you know, a professional microphone that I use, but I want to show you guys this at the most basic level. I'm just using my uh, MacBook Pro microphone. Uh, this says display port because I have my second screen plugged in. And so I have some built in speakers to that screen, but I could also just use my MacBook Pro speakers if I wanted to. But this is a, a playback of the recording that I'm going to be using. Um, and I'm gonna be able to use this for my monitor as well. Uh, so I'm actually going to choose to do this with a set of earbuds that I need to plug in real quick. And my um, audacity is kind of janky. It doesn't like when I introduce new audio equipment. So I'm gonna plug this in, but I'm gonna to have to quit audacity and then open it up again so that it can recognize it. Some of you might have that problem, some of you might not. Um, it just seems to be a little fickle on my machine. So now when I go back here, it's gonna show that I have external headphones. So my output is set as external headphones so that I can hear what it is I'm recording. I've got my microphone set as my MacBook Pro uh, microphone, built-in microphone to my laptop. I'm going to click to start my monitoring right here on the microphone. I'm just gonna click in there and you can see that it's green as I'm talking. Check, check one, check. So I know the microphone is working. I want to keep it away from clipping, which is where you see all of this red data being collected, that the microphone is really hot. It's, it's really sensitive to what I'm doing. And I have my violin already with me. I'm gonna play just a little scale and just test out how the sound is being recorded. So you see all that red, I don't want that. So all I'm going to do is come over here to my microphone, I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit so it's not as hot, right? So now you'll notice that I'm still speaking with the same volume, but I've adjusted where this monitor is tracking the sound. It's not going all the way into the red anymore and I can play the same thing. So you see it's not tipping into that red as much. I still got a little red when I played the chords. I'm gonna turn down a little more. So this is something you wanna do if you're using Audacity. You wanna check your microphones and kind of get a sense of how it's going to be. And you need to do it with the setup you're going to record in. In other words, I'm thinking of Hannah. If you have your laptop you know, on a bed or a desk or something and you're standing up playing your bass, don't stand right next to the laptop with your bass and check the microphone and then go stand four feet away by your music stand and record because it's gonna affect the sound. You need to set yourself up however you're gonna be recording try to get the microphone as close to you as possible, and then test the sound to make sure that it's not clipping. If you're not using Audacity and you don't have the ability to check uh, how the microphone is picking up your sound, um, listen to it. Give yourself enough time to do multiple takes or start recording, just record a few measures, and then go back and listen to it. If you're hearing distortion, if you're hearing anything that's gritty, or if you don't like the quality of the sound, it's probably mic placement or the fact that it's clipping and that it's just too loud for the proximity you are to your microphone. So play with that a little bit before you just sit down and try to record the whole thing so that you know you're getting a good take before you invest the time. So I've checked my mic, I've got my external headphones set in as my output so that I can listen to what I'm recording. And so here's the really clever part. I'm going to um, open up Finder real quick, go to my downloads. I just downloaded my play along track. Can everybody see that here? Right? I'm just gonna drag that bad boy right into Audacity. There's my play along track. See how simple that is? So I can drag that in there. Now you're not going to hear it because I have my um, headphones plugged in. Um, I mean, you might hear this faintly if I turn my headphones all the way up, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. Can you guys hear that very faintly? I'm trying to put my headphones up to my microphone. So I have this now playing through my headphones. The important thing for you to understand is that you can't hear it. That's intentional. You can't hear the play along track. I can hear it in my headphones. That's the point. And I'm gonna, let me try to bring the screen up so you can kind of see this parallel. And I'm gonna do speaker talk. Um, actually, let me do this and then isolate myself. There we go. Everybody should be able to see me now in the Audacity screen. 
So I've got my headphones so I can hear my play along track. I'll pop these on. And I've got my instrument and my music. Here's like the, the most important part about using Audacity to record this, if you're able to do this. Um, when you get ready to record, if you just hit the record button, I want you to watch this. This is the very beginning of the track where I should start recording. If I hit record, right, it should generate a new track where you're recording. But if you'll notice, it's not recording at the beginning. It's actually started recording after the play along track that I uploaded into Audacity. This is a default that you can't actually uh, change in Audacity. Anytime you hit the record button, it will start recording after the last audio data that was collected. So this is no good to me because I want to be able to play along with the audio track and then see if it actually lines up if I did it correctly. This is a very easy fix. You go to the beginning of wherever you are. You have two options. You can either go to tracks, hit add new, and you can just add a mono track. I know that my microphone records in mono. Um, and so I have this new track. Now I can click down here, right? Go back to the top. You can see that this track is activated and I can hit record and it'll actually record from the beginning for me. But I had to create a new track in order to do that. The shortcut, if you want to feel really cool and awesome, in Audacity, you can just hit Shift R, hold down the Shift button and hit R, and it will automatically generate a new track for you and start recording right away. So if you're worried about you know, trying to hold your instrument and move the mouse and kind of get everything going, it's really easy to just go down and hit Shift R, it'll create a brand new track and start recording. And then you can go through and play it and then hit the space bar, it'll stop recording for you and then see if you did it correctly. So I wanna do this in real time with you to show you how accessible it is. I opened up Audacity, I checked my mic levels, I set my output to give me my headphones so that I could listen to the play along track, downloaded the MP3 of the play along track, just dumped it into Audacity. I'm going to hit Shift R so that I can record a new track and play along with the MP3. I've got my music over here to the side. Forgive me, because I'm gonna have to count through all the rest, but I'm going to record myself and then I'll see if it lined up correctly, okay? So here is Shift R. I can hear the play along track. Counting my rests. Three, four, Right, hit my space bar, I stopped recording. So I'm just doing that as a test. Let me bring all of you guys back real quick. Um, was everybody able to see me in Audacity as I was doing that and kind of see how it was tracking everything? So here's the exciting part. I'm going to, and I might have to close it and restart it, but I'm going to unplug my headphones, switch back over here to do my MacBook Pro speakers, go back to the beginning and then see how I did in recording it. I can hear the play along track. Can everybody hear that? Three, four. You can also hear my kids. <laughs> So there it is, right? I've recorded myself along with it. There are tiny little issues you hear with how my grace notes were lining up. Um, there are small little changes. Let me pop myself back up here again. 
small little changes that I could absolutely make to this. And it is up to you on how you want to track it, how you want to re-record yourself and how you want to edit it as you're going along. Um, but what I want you to see is that you've got to have headphones in, play along with the play along track and go back and listen to it and see if it lines up. It should all be lining up. Uh, that being said, and I'm going to send out another email to remind everybody to do this. The first and most important thing for you to do is tune your instrument. Tune to A440. I had my uh, a, a really precise um, tuner with me when I did recording these play along tracks and I tuned myself every time before I did any takes. So make sure your instrument is tune, in tune. Um, you wanna make sure that's the very first thing that you do. But once you start playing along with it, you know, use your judgment, listen to it, see if you're satisfied with it, and then um, submit your recording so that we can listen to it, evaluate. This will be the measuring stick that we're going to use through all of it.